earlier question, what um, reaction response from the players do you hope and expect to see starting tomorrow? Well, it's already it's already happened. You know, there's been a bunch of guys in today. It's a very it's a very proud group. That's that's a little injured right now. You know, spiritually, which is a is a a good thing. You know, I, I think you know just I think the general attitude is uh, you know physically okay and and mentally a little little struggling, but we'll be good tomorrow. Type type you know feedback and 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 that came from offense defense special team young old um and that's 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 a good you know that's an accurate and and a good mindset right now for for not the the situation that anyone's anyone wants to be in mark i don't think you ever thought that you'd be here this time of year but is it just a disparity in talent that's going on right now, or is it the injuries, or is it, is it a combination? I mean, how do you go about deciphering what's going on? Yeah, every, again, every week is a little bit different um, when you look at, at certainly the last three weeks, uh, whether it's by position or individually, or again, first and foremost as coaches, how we we evaluate what what we are doing and or not doing, um, and and evaluating that constantly. We're we're constantly in that in that. Uh, uh, mode when you know win or lose um but uh yeah certainly nobody nobody draws this up but it, by the same you know by the same token totally believe in this group of guys as i've said many times i totally believe in this coaching staff to to make it right ryan mark it might seem like bad timing but in some ways could it be good timing to have a rival coming in that's flying high and ranked number five i'm sure they'll your team will have you know spirited practices and would like to rise up obviously and maybe yeah maybe if that again that's their their uh, you know coal in the fire type of, of thing um that that would be great uh, but you know the biggest thing again is just us controlling us and and uh uh addressing some of these issues that we're talking about and, and moving forward those those issues are they stuff that's continually being the same thing over and over each week or are they new things that pop up and if, if that's the case how much does it deal with just you don't want to blame inexperience that their guys are just so young but they just haven't seen this you know maybe the twists and the stunts that mm -hmm. washington state does so much until they have that experience that they can right. really truly know how to handle it yeah i mean that's that's part of it uh as as a as a coach, you're always it's always what could what can we do differently? What can we how can we help these guys? Um, and so you're always looking looking back through that lens. Um, certainly, we we you know uh, saw some stuff maybe maybe physically that that they hadn't hadn't seen before. Um, that that's that's we kind of had you know prepared for for everything they did but not not with those bodies doing it and they did a great job up front uh and and you know we we let a few things get away from us but that's where again we have to to help them out um and then yeah i mean it, it, every week like we said is a little bit different um the the run game issues pre presented by washington state were completely different than maybe the run game issues from uh virginia or uc davis but they're they're similar yeah Going back on the other. Go ahead. What do you make of Washington's start to this season, and uh, what do you see from uh, you know what Chris Peterson has done so far with us? Yeah, they're playing very, very well. Um, you know, I think had a great, a great schedule to 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 develop a lot of a lot of chemistry and a lot of uh, momentum. Uh, and they're playing playing very well in in every phase. Won a you know a very close game in in Tucson in in overtime, uh, and and uh, playing very well. Yep, very well. Ryan. Mark, is that gap between your number one and two quarterback still there in practice, or is Justin starting to close that as he gets more experienced game planning and that sort of thing? Um, you know, that's you don't really sit down every day in during the the, the course of a season and, and necessarily evaluate that um, gap. You know, to, to specifically to your question, um, but he's he's been practicing very well. I thought he reacted well in the game to, to you know, he had some guys in his face and some stuff going on, uh, got the ball out of his hands, threw it away, uh, you know, so showed, showed some signs, some some good good signs of what he what he's done in practice. I don't know if you were maybe expecting to use Jacob Breland quite a bit this season, but he seems to have gotten on the field early and often. Mm -hmm. He had that big catch last night. 
how's his progress been? And you know, he's in another spot where next year there's three guys gone ahead of him. Right. Yeah, I think he has a very bright future. You know, I think his his biggest thing uh, or his biggest question mark was always how physical he would be. But he's been he, he did a great job early early in the season. He was kind of in and out, be, you know, being available. Is unfortunately that that position has been uh, struck by by lightning or whatever. Um, but when he's been in there, he's been he's been very good. He's been physical. Uh, he, he's always been great with his hands. You, you saw how he could run in, in the open field, and so I think he has a very bright future. Andrew Chantel, do you have a question? Go ahead, Chantel. Coach, sorry, I think we missed the first few minutes, so if you've been asked this already, I apologize. Um, did When did you first see the Stanford-Washington score, and what was your reaction to that? When did I first see it? Was that the question? Well, it was a Friday yeah, night did. game, so we saw kind of the parts of that around our, our meetings and, and, and Friday night. And, um, you know, I think, again, Washington, apparently, you know, I didn't see the very – the. I don't know how much I don't think I saw any of the first half until till today on tape uh, and and you know got got up and and hot and and played aggressively in in every phase and and uh, I don't know I don't know exactly what happened with the quarterback situation with with Stanford but uh, Burns was in and out and they got they got hot and got rolling Andrew yeah Mark uh, you know Charles was really dynamic last night on kickoff returns. Is there a thought that you might move him back to, to punt and bump Darren out of there, or do you like each guy where they're at right now? Um, I think we like where they're at right now. Uh, you know, Charles is maybe a little – Charles one of those guys, again, to a – to a fault we try to overuse, and he, he, he'll he do it. You know, he, he I think he uh, – there at the, you know, second, third game, we weren't, we weren't catching – we weren't catching the punts and letting them, you know, letting them hit the ground. There's a, there's a adage that that's about 17 yards of field position every time the ball hits the ground. That's a, that's an average, um, and we never really gave up 17, but we gave up a, a bunch. And you know, I, I don't know exactly why um, some of the other things he was doing special teams wise, we've paired back on, and hopefully, hopefully that translates to more 100 yard kickoff returns and and uh, great effort on offense. With uh, with Johnny Reagan, is that injury going to be a season ender? Is that something you could comment on? I, I that was one of the things I think was asked earlier, and, and uh, we, it's inconclusive right now. Questions here, uh, Warren. Mark is losing continues. Um, I'm sure it's a constant struggle to keep the guys motivated and keep them up. As a coaching staff, how do you go about doing that, you know, every day and every week and just getting the guys to play for you and know that there's still a lot of football yet to play? Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, you, you, like I said earlier, you're, you're honest, you know, and you show them exactly what, what happened that was good, what happened that wasn't good, uh, what we should have done differently, could have done differently as a coaching staff, and you and you move on. But we are built around people and culture and character, and and it's in, it's in times like these when you need it the most, uh, and not you know not when it, you, you know the seas are calm and everything's great. Uh, it's 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 times like these, and uh, just again how hard they played. How you know you watch our our kickoff cover team, our our receivers blocking uh, downfield. I think I think those again are two things that we can hang our hat on. Right now, that 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 pays dividends in every phase of, of your of your program, or shows it. Any more questions, either here or on the phone? I've got one. Okay, go ahead. Mark, I was curious about Washington's defensive line. They blitz the least of anyone in Pac-12, but they also lead the conference in sacks. What is it about those? those guys up front that make them so effective getting the quarterbacks. Yeah, they do a great job. We were, we were talking about that earlier that the, you know, one of the, the biggest things is just first down success of, of when you're starting to game plan somebody. Uh, and there's a ton of second and longs. And, and so uh, a lot of that's tackles for losses, sacks, whatever it, it may be. And they do a great job um, uh, as a unit 
from a coverage standpoint and how they how they attack you without blitzing. Um, and you know they still they'll, they'll press you a fair amount, but uh, the the inside guys are are dynamic physical guys, uh, and then the the edge guys are are speed and physical guys, and so uh, very good. A lot of movement. Um, they'll get into you know as as you saw against Stanford, a lot of three man rush that is still very effective in terms of getting to the quarterback. Warren has another question. Oh. Mark, kind of along that same line, freshman offensive line under attack last night. Looking back at the tape, how did they do um, under those very difficult circumstances? And there's a lot to look forward to, I imagine, with that group. Definitely. And and there's a, a ton. And it was kind of the young guys against the old guys, a very, you know, uh, very veteran defense and offense that, at Washington State. And so, uh, that, some frustrating stuff that, that, you know, at the beginning, I think put a couple guys just on their heels. And when you start to, to play uh, with any sort of hesitancy that you're in trouble. And so we had a few of those things and that shows up in the form of footwork and assignments and, and communication. Uh, and that's a, a place on the offensive line. You can't, you can't live in a phone booth. You, you have to survive together and, and be able to communicate great. Um, and, and uh, we had some, some hiccups there that we'll, we'll get straight. Any more questions from any source? Okay. Thank you.